I'm going to push record and shut the door. Well, we welcome, Rihanna. I know we visited in other people's chat. Okay, so let me show you the pours that we did the other day. Here's this one, and it's drying, and I'm going to tell you right now, this is the Magicals and the Vivid, the Tur you can see the Turquoise Magicals, all in here, the Dark Turquoise, you can see some of the Magicals in the purple, mostly in the green it showed up on this one, but you can see it. It's probably going to be really hard to see if I just rock it. You can see the flash. You just have to look in the the little veins are glittery. And once it's got, it's cleaned and there's no silicone and I put a gloss varnish on it, I think it will really pop. Here is the other one. Now, this one has a lot of silicone sitting on the surface. I mean, I can just, like, pick it up and wipe it on my hand. The other thing that this one did is it kind of puddled on the edge right here where the paint was thick and maybe didn't go over the edge all the way and kind of started to dry, but I kind of like it. I think on this one, I'm leaning towards adding a lighthouse. So I'll show you what I'm thinking of. This is a lighthouse in Michigan, and I'm thinking about painting like a lighthouse up here on this cliff. Either that or doing a bigger lighthouse and putting a lighthouse here. But I'm thinking about adding, I'm thinking a, a lighthouse, something similar to this on this corner. Not, not this lighthouse, but something similar up on this cliff. But I'm not sure. And again, this one had to be, I have to let it dry more and take the alcohol off and the one that we did on the watercolor paper which is the leftover paint this is I cut it down and this cut off which I think would make a neat bookmark like if I paint the other back side so that it was covered I think it'd make a really neat bookmark um, or on a card, maybe. And this one's, like I said, it was just, and you can still see the magicals right in here. And these are two turtles off of a napkin. And what I ended up doing, which I thought was, I cut them out and then realized the back piece was still on there. So I glued down the back piece and then I went over it with white paint while Patty was on. And then when the white paint was dry, I put the turtle over so that it didn't go translucent. You know how when you add napkin, it goes clear? That way it's got white paint behind here so you can see the colors. And I think that turned out real cool. And uh, this is what I'm going to send to Shauna. I don't know if Shauna's here, but Shauna's going to send me some paint that she doesn't want anymore. So I'm going to send Shauna this because I know she loves the sea turtles. So I thought that turned out really cool. So here's what we're going to do today. We're going to pour this canvas. We won't be able to finish. And I have this hair that we're going to use the magicals on. I have all the magicals mixed with some water. And so we're going to flood some of this paper with the magicals and get him all nice and bright to put on this pour. So the colors that I have, I'll show you in just a minute, but I wanted to pour it before we put the watercolor magicals on him because the color that ends up may dictate what color we put on him. 
We won't be able to put it together today, but then we'll cut him out and I'll add him to the pour when it's dry. The other thing we're going to do is this was my first pour that I did and I have a turtle that we're going to watercolor with the magicals and then we're going to add him to this canvas. But first I thought we'd do this pour so that will dictate what colors. I have a big cup. Uh, well, I have paint on that canvas now. Doesn't matter. It'll all get covered in the end. So, the colors that I have, I'm going to just start pouring in our cup, is I have white and I have yellow. And then I have kind of a golden shimmery color. And I have a copper. And I have kind of a raspberry color. A little hot pink. A paler version of the raspberry and these all have silicone in them some gray I'm gonna add some more white and repeat that process Just add the rest of the paints. Add the last bit of that white. And some more copper. Like I said, I don't know what I'm going to get. I haven't done this enough to predict what will end up, which color will end up on the base, on the top of the surface. But we have a full cup of paint. And you can see we have cells already. I mean, it's full. I went with a bigger cup. And I may get mud. I may get, you know, the copper may have been too much. Oh, I do have some pretty cells. Okay, I'm going to let this go. I do want a torch before I start losing all of my cells. It is moving pretty fast. All right, so what I'm going to do is take and pick up some of the spill and put it on the corners. And get my edges right here. And 
And then I'm going to torch. Just getting the paint off the sides. And I'm going to turn this real quick. So I can get to this back side. Not unhappy with it. trying to take the paint from the area where it where it fell because it's going to be the closest where it dripped it's going to be the closest match for the sides okay me wipe my hands. I really like this bit right here. Let's uh, see if we can get one of these torches to light. This is just a butane torch. And I'm trying to get air bubbles out and get some more cells to form. I'm getting some smaller ones over here. And I'm not staying in one area too long. going to torch the sides a little bit. Alright, turn that off. That's harder to turn on, but it actually stays on the other torch that I bought. So what I'm doing is just, I'm trying, before I move it, I'm going to try to shake off some of the extra paint. Bubbles from the bottom into the tray. And then I'll set this down. And let's see. Get rid of all these cups out of my way. You do go through a lot of cups. Um, but I can't see putting the paint down the sink, so I don't know if... There's still yellow in that one. Um, but that was the only cup I still had paint in, really, was the yellow. I think if we put the bunny right in here, and it's mostly yellow, which is kind of what I wanted for the background. I think we'll be good. So let me move this on the floor and let it sit for days. Rearrange things here a little bit. 
and get rid of the mess. And let's wipe my hands off with a baby wipe. They're not too bad today. I managed to stay relatively clean. Uh, there was paint, water, Liquitex pouring medium, float trawl, and silicone. And a little bit of GAC 800 to keep it from cracking, from crazing. So, there was flood, which is the float trawl. Liquitex pouring medium, paint, some water. I just bought this. I think I'll probably switch to the PVA mix. I'm not sure I like the pouring medium. All right, so, but I did see Shauna, right? Come in. Shauna, I made you some. This was the paper that we poured on, Shauna, the other day, the watercolor paper. Remember you said you were going to mail me some paints? And I said I'd send you a little art gift. So this is what I thought I'd send you. It's uh, some of the napkins you sent me. Flood is an additive that you buy at the hardware store that... Uh, helps your paint flow and eliminates like brush marks it just makes the paint thinner so I thought that was cute and it's just, like I said it's just that paper that we the little scrap that we poured on the other day and did a swipe but I thought they looked cute on there So, let me set that aside. Alright, so here's what we're going to work on. We're going to work on our bunny and our sea turtle to go on the two pores. He's mostly golden, so I think with that, I'm going to stick with the pinks and the, and kind of the, this is crimson. All I did was take a little bit of the Lindy's Magicals and put it in these containers with some water. So we could use them like a watercolor. Almost. And I did that while I was watching Patty. And this is a copper brown and I thought that would be good on both the sea turtle and the him. Then I have a uh, red hot poker orange. I want the sea turtle to have uh, the shell to have some reds and some bright colors. This is Hogwarts orange, which we might use some on him. The other colors I mix, this is Steampunk Turbine Teal for the turtle. Rusty Lantern Lime for the turtle. I actually think I want to put the lids under them. I don't think that it would stay for a long time. I didn't mix that much up. Shimmering Still, still like a silvery still, which I thought would be good on the rabbit. Turbine teal, or time travel, time travel teal. And I might get some teal in on him too. Uh, Ponderosa pine olive. Something 
black. Like a, these are the Halloween ones. But this is kind of a purple black. It's really pretty. And sepia. Which I thought for the turtle. So I have my watercolor brushes. Some clean water. Let me get a paper towel. Now I didn't add a whole lot of water. Because I kind of wanted to keep these kind of potent. And fairly strong. This is not watercolor paper. I've tried to, all the, the gel medium, the Mod Podge, I tried to keep it under the paper, so there shouldn't be very much gel medium. Now, when you do, this is map, pointing with the other end of the brush here, let me get it, pointing again. Um, this is map, this is a piece of jelly printed paper. I'm going to scoot the camera in now that we're done with the pour. And I've shown you the Magicals. I think that's good. It's not about seeing the containers of Magicals. More about seeing the hair. Um, then after I got this whole head cut out of the map, then I added the music paper. Uh, this is tissue, like jelly printed tissue. I put some paper in for the eyes and added the black and the brown so it would dry. Um, this is silvery napkin that was jelly printed. I put a piece of dictionary print, then some jelly print over here, and then a piece of pattern. There's some paint in here. You'll see it'll react kind of differently, and I can come back with the zigs and kind of emphasize. And then these are stamped on napkin and put on here. So not sure how, but we'll let the magical sit and dry them because these most of these magicals have like a two-tone shimmer. So I think what we'll see is we should be able to see uh, some other colors come out if we dry it and some puddles and watercolors. So, and I'm not worried about this outside if I drip because that just soaked right in there. But see, this side's got paper. And I'm going to let my spray bottle help. Let it travel. Okay. And then I'm going to hit, I'm going to use the heat gun a lot because I'm going to try to build some layers with the magicals. So I apologize in advance. Let's take get a little bit of the black. Let 
and see if I can get that to move. Not, I'm going to move this turtle right now. Let's see, I'm not wild about the black color on it. I think it needs some teal or some green. Now these would probably work more consistently as a watercolor on watercolor paper. Because it is just sort of soaking in in most areas. I don't want to really cover up the pink with the teal. But I do like the teal better. It was, it was just it was too much pink down here. Okay, and let's go. I'm going to try the orange up here. I don't know. Add the copper brown over that and just darken it. bleed and right, I'm gonna dry that real quick can I move it up that a little better that's the whole thing okay, I'm gonna dry this Let's see. I like this green. This is the Ponderosa green. I'm going to put it in here. And let it sort of do its thing. Uh, it's too, it'd be good for the turtle, but I don't think I like it on, I think I like that line, this green and the teal better. Let's try one of the other teals. Yeah, 
and it's just soaking in where the paint is not on this tissue. That's why you're seeing the wider Okay. And I'm going to come back in with this green for this side. I'm going to put another layer in here. Like I said, when you heat it with a heat gun, you can get really pretty um, watermarks that you can't probably see on the camera. All right. And I like this teal better. I'm going to put this teal up here. Okay, I'm going to dry that again. don't think I like this orange so I think I'm gonna come in this turned a really pretty green where I put the teal over the orange so I think I'm gonna do that all the way down and just let it go with that and maybe even come in with some of the black shimmer because it's got more of a blue to it it is not covering the gel print very well like it's not soaking in it does leave a shimmer And I think I want to put more of that green on this side again. And maybe even some down here. some of the red again in here see if I can brighten up that ear area right in here Okay, and then I'm going to take the silver and put 
put it on the nose area. All right, so let's dry this again. Night, Rihanna. That's why you never come to my streams, because it's really late for you. Because I'm usually later at night. And I'm holding the heat gun kind of straight up so I can kind of control the water. I can get it to dry in puddles. It will leave little marks. Okay, I don't think I'm going to add anything more to him because, one, I don't think the paper's it's starting to peel up in some places where the glue didn't stick. But I think he's good as far as he's just going to be really pretty when he's cut out. And then when we glue him on the canvas, I can um, add more detail with the pit pins because all I'm going to do is trim around him. Let me get this off. And I purposely picked lightweight paper because I didn't want what went on the pour to be heavy. And this paper would almost tear away. From the other layers. In fact, it's so wet in places that his body, his little right here, is so thin and wet. You can see how the, where the water went through. But he'll glue, I think he'll glue down really nice. And then we'll add the details and the eyelashes. So we'll set him aside and let him dry until the pour is dry. And then we'll add him. In fact, you can sort of get an idea. Of this pour. OK. 
kind of what it would be like. And then we would add the details. But he needs to be dry. And actually, I'm going to put something flat on him so that he dries. I'm going to put him under some um, scrapbook paper pads, some 12 by 12 pads, so there's some weight. That keeps him drying flat. And that he'll dry real flat that way. Okay, so this paper here is also very lightweight. Let's uh, and I think it's just gonna soak up this. And I'm not going to worry about the lines because I'm going to cut them out. And I don't know if you can see on the camera the color shift that's in these. If you can see that like that Ponderosa pine olive has a gold in it. I'm gonna put the lid on this one because well I might use it. Right now I'm just using the teal and the ponderosa pine and trying to kind of hit the same colors for this part of the body. Okay. some more gold pigment on that one. And I guess I'll use this with the brown. With the outside. It is just soaking right in. But there is shimmer. I'm going to approach this a little differently since it's soaking right in. I'm just grabbing a couple of the areas and doing the hot poker orange. And then I'm going to, because I wanted this to be, this is the Hogwarts.
Okay, and then I may even try some of this crimson. go with this green teal I'm going to add it to some of these sides here get kind of a two tone Maybe the sepia. I'll knock that green down a little bit. Add it in some places. Oh, that was close. Um need one more in here. I guess it has to be that red just because of balance. And then I'm going to add the teal. On top of him. Let that bleed a little bit more. Okay. Let's put lids on these so that I don't have an accident and spill them. I haven't spilled any, but I have tipped them over. I don't know how well they'll stay in these containers. Some seem looser than others. We'll find some project that, to use them all up on in the next few days. All right, so what I'm thinking is a toothbrush. I'm going to dry this. I'm going to dry from underneath too. But you can see the shimmer, right? some up here too on the head. What I'm thinking is if I get some on the toothbrush and 
splatter. I don't think it shows up enough. So perhaps might have to use real paint. All right, so we need to dry him again because he's not dry enough to cut. And what we're going to do is we're going to put him on the canvas and add detail if we like him. I'm not sure I like him enough to put him on the canvas. But I'll use them. All right, let's cut him out. And again, the paper is so wet that it's not hard to cut. Um, in fact, his head just tore. He'll be okay. Let me um, stick a tiny... What I'm going to do is take a piece of glue where he tore. I don't... I want to deal with him more, so... I'm going to give him just a little repair back here. And I'm just going to take a piece of white paper and glue it. So he'll just give a little bit more support to that till I'm ready. I was, uh, I mean, I like the shimmer, but I'm a little disappointed in the, I don't think there's as much control. I didn't really feel like they acted like a watercolor, but they also don't have any of the binders that watercolors would have. I think I would probably just continue to use them as a spray or in a gel medium as a glaze or in modeling paste. I almost have them cut out. And then we can put them on the canvas and decide if we like them on that canvas. Because we might just need to use them on something else. I'm not sure. I'm not sure he adds anything to the pour. I think the, the pinks might be part of the problem.
Yeah, I think gessoed paper. Yeah, I didn't want to use really heavy paper because if I was going to add them to the pour, I wanted them to be thin. I don't think I like the colors, Eileen. But I know he's not done. But we could just... Maybe he's just not meant to go there. Maybe he's just better off on something else. Not that, but... Maybe he's just better off on a jelly printed background. Let me see, I had a blue one I was looking for. Maybe just better on a on a jelly printed background is what I'm thinking. Oh, here's the one I'm looking for. All the way over here. Maybe we'd, I'd just like them better on that. I don't know that I want to put them on the canvas. My problem is... That's too dark. That's a napkin. On the darker jelly. There's a green. Here's a darker. Yeah, I will use brush pens. Maybe that's just it. Maybe he just needs to have... Alright, we'll go for it. We're just going to put him on the canvas. We're going to just do it. And have faith. I just got to get all these little cups of color. Get my watercolor brushes out of the water so I don't forget. Put them away. You liked the green one? Should we just put them on here? Yeah, he definitely needs more details. I mean, he's not done. So, I'm going to wait for the lag. On the green, and just finish him on a piece of paper. Or go for it and put him on the canvas. 
green jelly print or go for it and put them on the canvas. Yeah, he's not done. He'll, he'll get more details. All right, so we're going to, I saw canvas. Let's just go for it. All right, so I'm going to gel medium on him and the canvas. I gotta be careful because he's so thin he's delicate. But I knew if I went with real thick paper that he would uh, be too, he wouldn't uh, be thin enough to meld into the canvas. Okay, and then I'm going to even add some gel medium back here on the canvas. In case I want the markers back here, because it's all going to get a coat of varnish when I'm done anyways. Okay. Let's try that. All right. He's on there. Everything dry where the gel medium is. Okay. Well, I will say he's so thin that he does, he's like smooth on the canvas. And this is kind of a bumpy canvas. So let's start with start with the flipper. And this is just a uh, pit pen, which is India ink. And I will tell you that he has lost the shimmer with the matte medium. So another disadvantage of using the magicals in that way. Okay, and then I'm going to take 
a teal on the underside and kind of do the same thing it's blended up Okay, so we may add some shimmer back to them. Let me um, move the camera closer to the turtle. You don't need to see the whole canvas. I know he's blending in here a lot right now. Um, I'm going to take some gray and well, actually I may even have to do uh, let me get up small black black kind of darken where that green was and on this turquoise I'm going to add the gray to the black that help with the fins hi Vicki Clean my fingers off. Okay. And I'm going to come in with a brown where this copper was. What I'm going to do is hit these lines and then kind of blend them. which kind of gives me a little bit of that what I was looking for in the splatter like I said I think what I'll do is come in and put some magicals on top and see if we can't do that. Do 
this back fin. Kind of the same way I did the other. the black So I think this is helping like calm the colors down in here. Kind of a neutral. that dry I'm flip it around I'm going to tilt it up so you, I think you can still see it The other color I think I'm going to use is a Sakin. I think I can use it in here to help. And this is um, an Indian red. have to say some of these are absorbing too. Um, so I must have areas that didn't have gel medium very well. And I'm going to add that. I need to get that purple color out. And this is doing that. Okay, and this is um, like a terracotta. We need to get the pink out of this too. But I think the brown will help. So I think this is a raw umber.
and there is some turquoise in here, so I'm going to darken some of that. Put some of that where the orange is here. Can't say that this pinky orange is doing anything for me. But hopefully this brown will take care. Hi Terry. I think this pulled in is what's going to save this shell. And kind of bring it back. Now some of this is acting like it doesn't have any gel medium on it. I don't know if it's because it was pastel paper. It almost soaks in. Okay, we need to give them an eye. Actually, I think I want to use paint pen. some paint pen just here and there. Darken up some of those browns. I keep disappearing on me.
Okay. Now he needs rings, kind of like wrinkly rings around his eye. So I'm going to put it in white. And let it dry. And then we'll add a green. But it's got to dry. Or teal. But that has to dry. I'm actually not displeased with them. I'm going to add a little bit of a yellow in here just to lighten it, keep it. Now the question is, does he need, well I'm going to let that dry and I'm going to cover that with green and then I think I'm going to coat him with gel medium. So that what we've done is protected. Okay. Let me coat him. So he's under a layer of the gel. We protect it. We won't lose what we have. Let me dry them real quick. All right, so my question is, does he need some white, like where he's, 
pushing, like he pushed through the water and there's some foam. Does he need some white in places here and there? Like a trail of foam, foamy water with some white that would pick up some of this and make him stand out like and I, I dry, that's why I dried him does he need this in some way built up And I'm even thinking the white paint pen. And we can wipe it off if we don't like it. Yes, no. Do you need some water movement? So, yes, if we kind of fade it. Or don't like it at all. I kind of, I'm with you, Eileen. I'm not sure I like it. as much. I think I'm going to leave just that little bit. I don't dislike that. Like take it back. Like put it on and then take it back off. I like it faded better. I'm going to let that dry a little bit. And then I'm going to scrub it off. Kind of following the lines of the painting. So what I'm doing is following some of the lines 
of the painting. And then wiping most of it back off. Kind of like that. So it's sort of following some of those lines, but then take a lot of it back off. But it looks like water. Yeah, I just didn't think, I thought he was blending in too much. But I like picking up a little white here and there. Along the outside of his body. All right, I think I'm done. Maybe he needs a quote over here later. Put some on the right side in the front. This here. Or up here. Here or here?
I think I like the little white, almost, instead of a shadow. Yeah, I have a, a, there's quite a bit of lag. Okay, I think we ought to try to see if we can get some shimmer back. With some of the magicals. But not all. The copper brown. We'll put some of that in here. And then let's that rusty line. Down along here. And I think I'm going to put the rusty line in the center here. And let it be down this bottom. All right, and then we're going to try some of the, the Ponderosa Pine had that really good gold to it. Yeah, it had that gold shimmer. I'm going to add that in some areas. Okay. All right, so let's that needs to dry, but not get any matte medium. So I don't know if when it had a granule not busted up there, I think. I don't know when it dries. I think it'll be okay if I put the varnish, uh, gloss varnish. But this is a matte, Eileen, and I've put it on matte before. So I think once it dries, and I'm going to, again, dry from the top. And get it to kind of puddle where it is. It did add shimmer right back to that shell. 
I don't know if you can see it on camera or not, but it did add some of the shimmer back to the piece. I'm tempted to put it in a couple of these places. But I guess I won't. This dries waterproof. The Magicals dry waterproof. So if when it's dry, it's dry. Let's try. Let's try something. This is where the green vein runs through anyways. Let's see what that does. Ah. So let me dry that real quick. Well, I did get shimmer in a few places uh, on the canvas where the green was. It's real subtle. So I will say that is a good way of kind of getting the shimmer where you want. Yeah, I'm going to use a gloss varnish on it. Um... Do we want a quote on it? Does it need a quote? Let me back the camera out. I feel like it's this little turtle all by itself. I'm not wild about this part of the pour. That's why I wondered if it needed a quote up here. I'm going to sign it down here. Because that needs to dry. Before I varnish it. that yeah but I don't have a computer so if I put a quote it's gonna have to be a quote that I have yeah so I think this is a good way to control where some of it goes on a piece adding a little you know just and using a brush Let me see what quotes 
I have. I may not have anything worthy. Of it. There is this, but I'm not sure. Right now, I don't think I have a quote that is going to be right for it. I have a little bag with some quotes in it. I'll get to in just a second. I do have Lookout World. Here I come. But I don't think I like that. Plus, I know what will happen. This is uh, vellum. It will pucker like there's no tomorrow. I need to print more quotes. I can find that little bag. The quotes I have may also be too small. it's either something in here or nothing at all. And I think these are all too small. Yeah, there's nothing in there. Um, I do have this, and I kind of like it. And it's sparkly. Just the word wonder. And then these. are like plasticky raised and they go clear and they're in green but I think they're too small the ones you know the, well there's one that says natural free but I think they're too small but I kind of like this because I don't really care for this. I like this, 
but I don't really care for this blob of white. In fact, you know what? I want to try something. We have nothing to lose. Let's try... I don't like that white. Let's try some magicals on this green area and see if it'll knock down the white. Might even knock down my signature over here a little bit with some magical. All right, let me dry this real quick. All right, let's get those. I'm gonna get these out of the way. I'll put these up. Oh, use the word small. the word small. I thought I had did. Okay, so we need gloss varnish. I am not going to use the triple thick. I don't think. I think I'm going to use the gloss. I hope I have enough. And I'm actually going to gloss that corner of the canvas and let it dry, then put the letters on. A magical shimmer is staying under the gloss. Cross. Right. Add just a little bit more. This is a uh, gloss varnish. I 
track. So I'm going to stick this on here while wow, that's wet. Do we just want the one flower or do we want the little cluster of flowers? It's not a gel medium. It's a gloss varnish. And I'm going to add a little bit of the varnish on and around the words just to kind of I don't think it needs the other flower unless we put like a another one on on different left. I don't think it needs the other flowers to be honest. But like I said, it did, um, you can still see the magicals. Get that in water. Almost out of the gloss. I have a lot of satin, but I don't have as much gloss left. Yeah, there's no flowers in the ocean. That was my thought too, Teresa. I've not had any problems with this one reacting with the Mosh Posh, and I've used it before. In fact, that's why this one's... I uh, The triple thick I have had problems with when I put it on too thick, but the DuraClear, I really haven't had any problems over the Mosh Posh. Um, I've also used the traditions and not had any problems. In fact, you know what we ought to do while I have varnish on that brush is let's put a coat on Shauna's piece while we're Remembering to coat. And I left it eight and a half. Um, you might need to trim it, Shauna down to 8 by 8 if the framing is easier. Make sure I got all this side on the top cleaned the sides of this one and the bottoms I almost cut it to be an 8 by 8 I wasn't sure when you get those 8 by 8 frames if their glass is edge to edge 8 by 8 or not Yeah, the varnish really will make the other colors pop. And this one uh, has some of that purple that you like in it, Shauna. I don't know if you can see over on the side. It's got some lavender gray colors to it. Um... Let me 
show you what our pores looking like. Let me move this somewhere safe. And move Shauna's to safety. And I'll pick up the pour. Well, I will say that I'm somewhat disappointed. We lost some of that burgundy up here. That was so pretty. But as a background, I'm not sure I want to put the rabbit on here. But as a background piece, it's what I wanted. It's not so busy that something would look pretty on it. I'm getting all the drips off the edges so they don't set underneath it. Just using a plastic palette knife and scraping under the bottom of the canvas. But like I said, what I liked up here has slid off. Yeah, even if I don't put the rabbit on it, I'll put something on it. But they do, you know, that's kind of what happens as they sit. I don't know if we could torch it and get any more cells. I'm getting a, a few small ones, maybe. I also could add a ribbon potentially across it, but I think I'll just put a animal on it. I'm not really seeing any cell action other than I got a couple to pop right in here through that yellow. So I think something, like I said, if the, I may end up putting our rabbit on this one. If it looks better on this one. Let me get our rabbit out. He should be dry enough. I can find which layer of paper he's he could go on there I might put him on there with a quote sideways I thought he was going to go this way but I think I actually like him this way And if I move them over a little bit, then I could may have a quote right here. We'll just see when it's dry. The the torch isn't hot. 
I mean, as long as I'm not using alcohol. Some people use alcohol in their mixture. I don't have any rubbing alcohol in my mixture. Let me put this back down on the floor. So, well, that was kind of it for me. That's all I had ready. And I'm really ready to go get some food. I thought I'd start a little earlier than I did. Yeah, I have watched it. Um, I'm not sure. She also used Golden's Fluid Acrylics. And everybody who has been on the group's using the alcohol with deco art paints have reported that they goop up and that they react and same with the liquitex well all my paints are deco arts and liquitex for the most part so i don't even know they're using 96 percent or 91 i have 70 percent alcohol I don't know if I want to mess with it, to be honest. And I just bought a ginormous bottle of the poor medium. So, at this point, I don't think I'm going to uh, try the alcohol recipe. I'm going to let more people do it because I'm using... Deco art paints. And if Deco art paints goop up with the alcohol, uh, then there's no point in me trying the alcohol mix. I'm not unhappy with the results I've gotten. Some of it's just learning to have enough paint. The cup tonight, this cup was too much for an 11 by 14. One of these full is not enough. So, like Rebecca and I were talking, you need to figure out, like, how much paint you need to kind of to have enough paint. It's better to have too much, but if you pour too much, then good stuff flows off the edges. You lose parts that you're like. So, um... I might try, I'm going to try, the next one I want to try is doing a swipe. I have an idea for a swipe. Yeah, I'm happy with the results I'm getting. And I wasn't even looking for a whole lot of cell action. Hi, Jean. I was looking more, let me stop the recording. I was looking more for some backgrounds that we could put the animals 